So one day my buddy tells me he needs a ring, which didn't seem out of the ordinary since he made a similar request in the past. In fact, it was for four rings, but they were all for his Avenger. To be honest, I assumed he just fell in love with a new, more beautiful car, but he claimed he was getting married to a woman this time, which is also pretty good, I guess. Now, I'm an engineer, not a jeweler, so I did some benchmarking, but nothing seemed worthy enough for my good friend. I'm thinking since he's really into RC cars, what could be better than this? What it lacks in practicality, it makes up for in sheer awesomeness. But after a bit of reflection, I decided not to show him. Call me selfish, but this one's gonna be mine. Concept 2 is the nuclear option. This thing's got some serious style, but it's no false flag. It has a radioisotope core of pure cobalt-60. What can you do with a ring that emits beta and gamma radiation? Lots of things. You could turn regular turtles into ninja turtles, or summon Captain Planet, although I don't think he would appreciate the method. They say if you give a man fire, he'll be warm for just one night. Or you could give a man a nuclear ring, and he'll be warm for the rest of his life, which in this case could be about a week. So let's just forget about this one. My friend had one major requirement. It had to be ridiculously ultra-thin, but conventional precious metal alloys just aren't strong enough to make a ring this sleek. We need something with better tensile strength, hardness, and impact resistance. Stainless steel may be real, but tie is fly, so how about something that really flies? Titanium is an ideal choice, in this case commercially pure grade 2. Only the very best McMaster car has to offer. Tie has an excellent strength to weight ratio and is the most biocompatible metallic element, but tie alone isn't enough. We need something even cooler. What is that? That's palladium. We're gonna put a ring within this ring. The challenge is how thin our inlay will have to be, and the fact that soldering palladium to titanium is impossible, unless we're doing it in a vacuum and we don't have a vacuum brazing furnace. One reliable way to bond these two dissimilar metals is to do it mechanically. The idea is to machine a special dovetail groove and then forge a thin palladium strip into this undercut to securely lock it in place. As you can see, the groove is less than 0.6 millimeters deep with a 10 degree negative taper. That's incredibly thin. How thin is 0.6 millimeters? The distance between each one of these lines is the thickness of a piece of paper. After we finish forging our palladium strip, we will then solder the ends to each other and machine the inlay flush. In order to make that special inlay groove, we're going to have to grind out a special tool. So let's set up our new tool and zero in our center point. To make the groove, we'll plunge the tool directly into the piece and then move it side to side to get our negative angle, then retract from the center. The tool will only move one quarter of a millimeter in the lathe, which will be imperceptible. Now that the groove is done, all we have to do is move the tool to the end of the ring dimension, plunge it all the way through the part until it detaches, and gets lost in the chip tray for me to fish out with a pair of pliers. The rough machining of the ring is finished, but now we have a problem. The ring is too small to be gripped by our lathe collet, which means now we have to build another special tool. This custom mandrel grabs the inside diameter of the ring, and since it's made out of aluminum, will not scratch it. We will first use this tool to remove a burr left from the previous operation, and then we will reinsert the ring into the collet and deburr it from the inside. Now it's time to put in our palladium inlay. 
but before we do, you have to make our last special tool. This time it's going to be steel because aluminum would never withstand the punishment we are going to apply next. Palladium isn't soft like gold. If we want it to flow into our undercut, we're going to have to persuade it with high temperatures and impacts. It's a delicate balance between forming the palladium and not destroying our ring. Oh, I think this is going to work. Why would a nail be better? Screwdriver is the wedge shape. That's what you want. So is a nail. That way it won't fall off. A nail isn't a wedge shape. Palladium solder comes in this small metal tab, but all we need is a little strip. Let's cut off a piece and see if I can melt it with a plumber's torch. Now it's solder time. Heating the entire ring like this is to relieve induced stress from the forging and soldering process. Here's what we've done so far. All we have to do now is cut the two side chamfers, then sand and polish the ring. All done. That was so easy. So now that you have your titanium palladium super ring, what special stuff can you do? Well, let's just say if you find yourself in an underwater habitat that's being dragged into an abyss and bad stuff is happening, like a hull breach, and you have to run for your life because the hydraulic bulkhead doors are closing, just stick out your hand. But before you decide to do this, make sure the doors don't exert more than 100 newtons of force. I'm going to give you a factor of safety of two because you're my buddy and all. I know you'll use your best judgment. Come on now. This ring is titanium, not adamantium. Well, I've done all that I can. Good luck on the rest of the marriage. <laughs>